Hey guys, Paul Bryant here. This is the Mostly MMA Podcast coming at you every Monday. And today I'm here with a special guest, uh, Colin uh, Fickus, from, uh, uh, best known from One Tree Hill. Uh, Colin, thank you for stopping by. Hey man, thanks for having me. How, how's life treating you these days, buddy? Life is good. I mean, it's a little cloudy here uh, in New York City, uh, so for Memorial Day, not, not the brightest Memorial Day, but... Um, I'm doing well, man. Good, good deal. You know, uh, I was wondering, you know, what kind of projects do you have going on these days that's, uh, you know, taking up your time? See, I get asked that a lot. Uh, a lot of people think I'm still acting, but I actually left acting in 2012. Um, so for the last five years or so, I haven't really been acting. Um, I actually left Los Angeles in 2012 and then uh, moved to North Carolina, which is where I'm from originally actually where Wintry Hill was filmed and uh, and then so I was in Raleigh for four years I started a uh, juice company with my sister and then last year I uh, moved up to New York so I've been here for the last year good deal How, how's uh, how's New York treating you compared to uh, Wilmington <laughs> I, I always love Wilmington and always wish I was there but uh, you know New York's great it's a little louder than Wilmington uh, um, but, but yeah it's a uh, it's a, it's a cool city to be in. There's always something going on. Is the New York Minute really faster? It is. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. It keeps you on your toes for sure. Now, uh, your juice business, somebody asked me to ask you, which I think I already know the answer, but they was wondering how they could buy it. And I think I read that you can only sell it locally because of the shelf life. I don't do it too often just because it can get fairly pricey on our end because mm-hmm. we're, not, we're not doing it on a, on a massive scale. Uh, but yeah, no, we're based in Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, anyone in the United States can order it except if you're in Alaska and Hawaii. And, um, and yeah, we, we ship it all over. We just do have a requirement that if we are shipping, we do 18 juices, um, no less, no more. So that's basically a three-day juice cleanse or 18 juices that you can you know, have uh, to drink. Uh, within like five days but yeah so our, we have a shelf life of five days so it's super fresh juice um, and so we don't pasteurize it so most juice that you've had at a grocery store or seen on a shelf it's been sitting there for for months at a time and, and we just do super fresh juice where we don't heat or uh, pasteurize the juice so uh, there is a, a short shelf life which um, we kind of think is a positive mm-hmm. um but also it's been difficult to work with too just for for shipping purposes and shelf life and things like that is there uh is there a website that someone could go to to order yeah man yeah you can go to humdingerjuice.com uh it's called humdinger juice www.hum uh as in mary d-i-n-g-e-r juice.com and like i said we're we're there in raleigh north carolina and uh you know we have a facility where we make the juice where we press it uh, three days a week, and you can stop in. We're open Sunday through Thursday, and uh, my sister's still down there running the company. Um, it's kind of a family business. My mom's in there, my brother's in there some, and uh, a childhood friend uh, and another buddy of mine, they actually press the juice. So uh, it's there in Raleigh, North Carolina. Good deal. So, you know, you said you you left acting back in uh, 2012. Uh, you, you got the, the itch to, to come back to it? You know, it, it, it comes and goes. Um, there's things that I don't miss about the business, uh, and then there's things that I do, um, which the things that I miss are actually not about the business, but just about the actual, you know, craft of, of acting and finding a character and, and um, you know, reading scripts that uh, or plays that writers, you know, write and making it come to life. Like, you know, I miss all of that stuff, mm-hmm. but... Uh, yeah, it comes and goes. There are days and weeks where I, I miss it, and I've kind of considered jumping back in here and there. So, I mean, who knows what the future holds? But, but for now, I'm, you know, up here and uh, and you know, yeah, hanging out. Now, One Tree Hill. Everybody knows, like the One Tree Hill fans are just absolutely obsessed, man. Uh, do you have any crazy fan stories? I've been, been to a couple of uh, the, uh, conventions and met, you know, and people come up on the 
the street all the time, and um, it's just the best fans in the world. I mean, they're diehard, and they love the show, and I, I think, you know, it's been interesting for, for me particularly, just because it was such a, um, kind of like a pivotal turning point of the show, and, and, and based on the character, I get some, you know, really interesting conversations and stories with some of the fans that have experienced um, some of the feelings and things that, that my character went through on the show, so... You know, in that regard, it's been it's been really amazing, and I, I wouldn't say the craziest story, but one of the coolest stories is at one of the conventions. They had you know that river court where where everyone played basketball and where we were for for my character at least in the first uh, couple episodes. They actually the city of Wilmington, I believe, had to tear it up, mm-hmm. and so they bulldozed the court. And a fan had snuck over in the middle of the night. I think this is how the story went. And so while it was dark out, they stole, or not stole, kindly took uh, the bits and pieces and the fragments of the uh, of what was left of the river court. And then I think they had sold some on eBay. And anyway, at one of the earlier conventions uh, that Icon uh, had, they uh, the, the fan brought us, you know, brought all of the cast members that were there little bits of the uh, of the river court, which was really cool. It was kind of like you know. You know, the One Tree Hills Berlin Wall. I mean, it was like oh, a yeah. piece of history, and it was just really sweet that the fan went out of their way to like, you know, because I mean that that stuff was heavy, you know, mm-hmm. so, like heavy little bits of the the river court, and I thought that was really cool, and that's kind of always stuck with me. Yeah, I love that that Berlin Wall comparison. Uh, I was devastated <laughs> when I heard that the river court was tore down, you know, because I'm a big basketball uh, fan uh-huh. and player, and I'd always fantasized about playing ball yeah. there, so that was. Do you know why they, you know, why they, you know, sorry. Maybe one day they'll build it again. Yeah. I think it was something, I don't even know. I think it was something with like, uh, something with the city and the zoning or, I'm not sure. Um, but you know, I think they built that court just for the show. Right. Um, I have no idea, man. I know the bridge is still there. So, so, you know, there's always the, the One Tree Hill Bridge and, and all the other cool places that we shot the show. Um. But yeah, man, I'm sad, sad that the river court went away. But um, I think it's still a grassy field, and I think fans can find a way to get over there across the water and, and see it. It's a really pretty view there, too, where you kind of look back across the water at Wilmington, which is just a really pretty sight. Yeah, definitely. I know, uh, you know, I'm part of a lot of uh, One Tree Hill groups on Facebook, and uh, one in particular is the, uh, the Icon group, Return to Tree Hill. And they yeah. they're always posting photos of the bridge and and you know where Karen's cafe was and and just all kinds of stuff like that. Right. It's really cool. Yeah, Icon's really cool. They've been I think they've had I don't know seven or eight conventions. Um, I've kind of lost track, and they've been so gracious to have me at each one. And uh, you know, it's it's cool. Yeah, they they kind of offer these um, cool experiences for for fans of the show. Now I've never been the one, but I am. I do want to go to the one in October. Uh, are you going to be there in October? Awesome! I haven't officially been invited, but I mean, I've been to every single one, so I can't see me not being there. But you know, who knows? Um, and if my schedule allows, you know, I'd love to be there. For uh, like a lot of us that have n- have never been to a con, uh, what what should we expect from something like that? Party or you know different themed parties 
throughout the weekend, which is always nice. And I know that they sometimes do tours where you can go around and see Brooke Davis's house and various things like that. So it's a good time, man. And it's funny, after the end of the weekend, I mean, everyone's worn out. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's a good time. Yeah, I know I seen on the Facebook page there where they went live last time and they were they were having like a barbecue at Brooke Davis's house. It was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, no, Icon and uh, Variety Radio Online is you know, it's a great group of people. So uh, I highly recommend that you make plans to come. Definitely, man. You know, uh, I wanted to ask you, did you ever have any fans mistake you for someone else? I've gotten that, yeah. I mean, it's funny, back when I was acting, I'd always go in for like the Seth Rogen, even though I don't really look like him, or a Jonah Hill type. But I, I, I actually have a beard in real life, and it's funny, you know, I, I guess it's a curse of playing younger, but I would always have to like shave when I was um, on set or when I would get roles that were younger roles. But, but yeah, in real life, I have a beard, and I uh, actually was able to grow it out really big for, uh, for Transformers. Uh, which was a film I did several years ago. But when I have the beard, I mean, I full on get Zach Galifianakis. Oh, time. yeah. Um, yeah, and I've got Tyler Levine, who's an actor, um, who we actually did an episode of uh, Invasion with. And um, yeah, I mean, just kind of. Oh, and I get Kevin Smith, who I guess he's considered an actor since he's been in some of his stuff. But um, the director, Kevin Smith, I. Silent Bob. And. Uh, What's that? Silent Bob. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, you know, I'd like to think I'm an original, but I'm clearly not because every now and again people are like, hey, you look like so and so. But, uh, yeah. I, I get that sometimes too. I had somebody come up to me at Walmart and ask me how so and so was, and I was like, do I know you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, right. Out of uh, you know, out of all your roles that you've played, man, which was your favorite role to play? One of my favorite roles is it was this independent film that I did back in two thousand and I want to say it's two thousand and three. Um, it was this southern gothic film called Crystal. Uh, it was directed by uh, it's actually an Academy Award winner. His name is Ray McKinnon. Uh, great actor, great writer, great director, and it was this film with Billy Bob Thornton, and we we went to um, Eureka Springs, Arkansas, for like a month and a half, um, and it was just this really interesting character, um, and it was, you know I, what I considered fairly different from myself, um, and uh, it was just it was a fun it was like comedy and drama, so it was nice that it was kind of a mix of both and. Um, it was this. It was this film, yeah, 2003 that we shot it, and then it, it went to Sundance in 2004. And uh, unfortunately, it kind of just went straight to DVD. Uh, so it, you know, I think people have discovered it over the years, but it's a small film, and um, I don't know. I'm really proud of the work that it did, and um, I just think it's an interesting character, an interesting role, and it was an interesting film, and and I had a lot of fun doing it too because we were in the middle of nowhere for like you know. A month and a half, and um, it was just a lot of fun. Yeah, we all have to check that out. You know, if you were going to, uh, you know, what would your dream role be? Like, you know, if you could just, uh, you know, maybe write write your own role or, or just kind of pick what you want, what would your dream role be? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'd love to play a villain. I think that'd be interesting. Um, some people would probably assume that I was kind of a villain in One Tree Hill, but, you know, I definitely think that he was kind of like a victim of his circumstances but um you know it'd be fun to play like a you know balls to the wall like villain just like a really really bad guy um i haven't gotten to do that so i think that would be a lot of fun yeah yeah i would you know i would not i wouldn't classify jimmy edwards as a as a villain uh but i agree like i thought like dan scott on on one tree hill it's something about being a villain that yeah. that is just different type of acting a different type of you know <laughs> what i mean it's just like a deeper deeper yeah. character yeah. Now, uh, what was it like when you got the call to come back to be to play Jimmy Edwards? It was really crazy. It was like it was completely unexpected. Uh, I had left the show after two episodes in the first season, and then I, I moved back to Los Angeles because, like I said earlier, the show was filmed in, in Wilmington, North Carolina. And then I was back out in LA, and like a year or two went by, and then um, randomly my manager 
Twitter called me and was like, hey, Mark Swan, the creator of What You Know, wants to meet with you. Um, and so I, I, out of nowhere, like was like, sure. And then I went to the Warner Brothers lot um, out there in Burbank, California. And um, his to get to his office, you kind of walk through these other offices, and there's a hallway, and there are these writers' rooms where you know where they're obviously writing the material for the show, and um, the walls are in a lot of writers' rooms uh, are like dry erase boards, and so they're kind of like plotting out you know the the season. Yeah. And as I'm walking back to the meeting, I see on the wall, I see the character Jimmy Edwards written kind of in multiple places. I was like, what in the world is going on? Because I was like, I, you know, I had only done the first two episodes. Right. And uh, it had like e- been like two years. And so uh, I go back there and, and it, it, we catch up for a little bit. And then Mark just like spills it. He goes, this is my idea. This is what I've been thinking about doing. Your character's been gone for two years. And we want to explain his absence. And then I, I don't think he had written the episode at that point, but he basically walked me through pretty much everything that you see on the actual episode. You know, he went into like, you know, you hold the, the kids captive and you draw a line with, you make someone draw a line in the room with tape. And then, um, and, and then he obviously explained the ending and, um, and he asked me if I wanted to do it. And I said, sure. I was like, I mean, there was no hesitation. Um, so I signed up for it, and then, and then I guess you know that's that's kind of how it went down. Yeah, that that's pretty cool, man. I, uh, you know, I didn't catch it when it was on TV. I started watching it when like the third season was already out on DVD, and uh, on one of the screens it had you on uh, your picture holding the gun. I'm like, what in the world's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, they should have done that. They yeah, that gives it away. They it did. Have, uh, Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it was pretty wild, man. They like to go from a happy-go-lucky, you know, in the first two episodes, and then you know he's this happy-go-lucky kid, and um, and then to see it kind of take this drastic turn, um, yeah, it's pretty nuts. Yeah, definitely, man. And you know, really, your character was almost like maybe one of the most important of the show because even up until the last season, they're still talking about Jimmy Edwards. Yeah, I know, it's crazy. I was like, man, if I had a dollar for every time they said Jimmy Edwards on that show, <laughs> You're right. we'd be going to Vegas. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. It was pretty interesting how it kind of shifted the, um, shifted the, kind of the trajectory of the show a little bit. Yeah. In this small but kind of pivotal way. Definitely. Uh, you know, in the show... I thought, I thought it was an important episode. Yeah, go ahead. No, sorry, you go ahead. No, I was just going to say, it was, it was also, you know, it was an important, you know, much credit to Mark Schwann and everyone involved to, like, kind of tackle that material, I thought, you know, took a lot of guts and, uh, you know, and a lot of people were hesitant to, to want to do it. I, mean, I remember Hillary, she never, she didn't want to do it. She was like, you know, this, this has been done and, um, you know, why do we need to keep talking about it? And mm-hmm. what was crazy is that that same week that we were filming the episode, there was another school shooting. And oh, so wow. it just kind of drove home the point that like this is still very much a big deal and um you know i don't think that she was saying that it wasn't a big deal but you know right, it's kind yeah. of it's sketchy territory you kind of go into and you want to do it justice and you want to you know do it right so um you know the fact that everyone kind of like took that leap was a was a really cool thing yeah definitely uh in in the show Jimmy Edwards he uh you know he commits suicide you know however you want to you want to phrase that uh but uh did this bring any fans to tell you about maybe like some of their close calls with suicide or maybe how your your character helped them with maybe their suicidal thoughts Yeah man it's been unbelievable the number of people that have reached out through uh through letters and through social media um and even at the conventions um I don't really want to I don't want to get too specific on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I don't want to out anyone in their 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 pain right. um, or you know private private matters. But yeah, I mean, there's been there's been numerous um, fans and people that have seen the show that have said how it affected them, and uh, it's uh, uh, it's been pretty 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 cool to like to hear those stories. Um, I mean, I think that just drives on the how important the arts are and, and how, you know, how 
how vital the arts are because I think it can it can change people's trajectories in their li- in their own lives and um, you know helps them relate and find comfort and um, find solutions and I don't know it's just it's been really cool to like to hear some of the stories that people have said uh, told me about so uh, so yeah it's been a it's been a cool thing. That's good. Yeah, it kind of kind of really brings some you know importance to the character and, and to your to your work and stuff. You know, I uh, Mark Schwann, man, that dude is I love him, man. He's a genius. There was a I don't know if you've ever seen it, but there's a meme and it like it had like Bill Gates and he's like well, I created the internet and it had someone's like well I created Apple and then it had Mark Schwann is like well I created One Tree Hill. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. No, he's a he's a great guy. And he's incredibly talented. Um, yeah, it's uh, pretty remarkable what he's done with the show. Did uh, you know, everybody at some point has been bullied. I don't care if you're the pretty girl or the jock. You know, everyone's been bullied. You know, was that was this something you could relate to as playing Jimmy Edwards? Oh, of course. I mean, just like you said. I mean, there's there's times in everyone's life where they've felt misunderstood or they've been bullied and um, felt kind of like the odd man out. Um, and yeah man I mean like I remember middle school was horrible I hated middle school Uh, luckily in high school I found a great group of people that were kind of from all walks of life and just a really good group um, of high school friends but in middle school it was it was rough man I hated it Um, you know you're going through puberty and there's all these changes and um, yeah man I, I I hated middle school um, and I remember being bullied and um, you know so, so yeah definitely and so yeah pulling from that a little bit even though when I shot the show I was you know much older but yeah you tap into a lot of that stuff I mean and even you know there's times when you're even older where you you feel left out or bullied mm-hmm. and, you know um, yeah so so yeah it's just tapping into all that all that stuff which I think is kind of this universal um thing that everyone goes through at some point yeah now you know i'm not just saying it because you're on the podcast but man you you really killed it when you did that that episode there uh you were just thanks man i mean when that went off that just kind of left you like whoa you know that was that was something dude that was really good you know like before the shooting like before you get ready to start man like what were you what were your thoughts and stuff you just I was really worried that I was going to, you know, not be able to 
speak. And, and actually, if you watch the, um, the uh, suicide prevention little clip we did at the, uh, the PSA that we did at the end of the episode, you can hear it in my voice, and I'm completely wiped out. And that was a, a day of, 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 like, crazy overtime. And uh, it was, like, I think 2 in the morning or 1 or, one or 2 a.m. And um, so if you watch that PSA, it's horrible. I, like, can't hardly, I can hardly talk, and I'm completely out of it. I just shot the scene where I, you know, shot myself. And um, it was kind of put me out of it yeah but, um, but yeah so that's kind of the kind of just go to those dark places and you just kind of get it done you know yeah but um yeah did uh well i want to mention too i had uh lee norris on my podcast uh like two weeks ago or three something like that but uh i had asked him what his favorite episode was and he he'd said that one was his favorite Yeah, it definitely is. Uh, do you keep in contact with uh, many people from One Tree Hill? Not, not a lot. I mean, I think everyone's just super busy. And the cool thing about the conventions is I get to see everyone there, which has been really nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, so a couple times a year I get to see everybody. Um, but yeah, you know, I keep in touch with Lee and, uh, and Hillary every now and again and, uh, and Brett Claywell. Buddy of mine, and uh, he played Tim on the show, and um, yeah, I mean, so mainly at the conventions, I get to see everybody, which is really nice. Yeah, it's a good reunion. Uh, you know, if you were to play Jimmy over again, if you had it to do over again, is there anything you would have uh, tried to do differently? Uh, um, oh no! Now you're confusing like me. <laughs> yeah, I just I don't know <laughs> if you'd have just done everything. I think it would have been cool to like. I think it would have been cool to like have some more episodes in the beginning there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, with with him and Mouse. Um, but you know, but also the beauty of of leaving early on was that like you know you could have this switch where you could explain this like absence and. You know, so, uh, I don't know, yeah, really cool, I don't know, or I think it would have been cool to come back as a ghost, uh, <laughs> but I don't know they did that with Keith, and I, I don't think they could do that with everyone that dies on the show, but, um, I think that would have been cool, because yeah. I've never played a ghost, and yeah. I think that would be kind of awesome. That would have, that would have um, been cool. But yeah, that could have been fun. With the ghost of Jimmy Edwards. Yeah, and he, like, talks it out with, with Mouse, and helps Mouse find, like, you know, some, some resolution or some peace around it and I don't know that would have been kind of been cool but uh I don't know yeah um uh, somebody wanted me to ask you uh is there a place that they can purchase an autograph from you um that's a really good question um I mean I guess through one of the conventions maybe I don't know if you're saying if someone can't come to a convention yeah I guess so yeah um, I guess they could con- they could contact me on Instagram that's my, my favorite social media to reach out and, and talk with fans is um, is Instagram I try to keep Facebook for just like immediate friends and, mm-hmm. um, and family but um, but in terms of like social media like Instagram is a really great way to reach out um, yeah and I suppose if anyone really wanted a picture I could uh, always talk to them there and then you know figure out a way to, to send it to them um, so yeah, I would say Instagram, and you just it's my name, it's the handle, so just Colin Fickus, all one word, and um, yeah. That's a good deal, man, yeah. I know uh, people are going to be uh, mad that I didn't get to answer or go to a lot of their questions here, but uh, 
we covered we covered a lot of good stuff, man. And you know, I'm I'm real I really appreciate you coming on, dude. It was awesome having you on. This is you know I, I really appreciate it, dude. Oh, well, thanks for having me, man. It uh, means a lot. Me too, dude. Uh, you know, take it easy, bud. I'll we'll I'll let you go. You too, man. All right. Awesome, man. Enjoy the rest of the uh, Memorial Day weekend. You too, man. Take it easy. All right. Take care, bud. Bye. Take care.